In today's Paint With Me video, we'll be doing a traditional anchor and eagle, so let's get to it. Alright guys, welcome back to the table and in this video we're going to be doing this American traditional or old school style design. The line work for this one, it's available in a link in the description so you can download this and print it out, trace it onto some watercolor paper. So we're going to be using Liquitex acrylic inks to color this as usual. I have a yellow orange to start with. I've preloaded my palette so we've got yellow orange which is the golden yellow sort of color. I've got a pyrrole red which is a deep red, sap green. I've also got carbon black, just solid. And then I've also got a brown, which is yellow orange. And I've put a few drops of uh, dioxazine purple and a vivid red orange in there to give us a brown, a nice brown shade. Along with this, I've also got two brushes. I've got an inking brush and a blending brush. And I've also got a glass of water, which will be used just to wash out the uh, brushes. So along with these two brushes, we will get into it. They are synthetic Taclon brushes and it's a number five and a number six. So getting straight into the carbon black here, we're going in to do our black shading. I always start with black shading. It doesn't matter what I'm doing, whether it's background work or you know the main sort of subject matter. I always start with a bit of black shading and this gives me my values. So you get your deep heavy blacks you get your mid grays into your lighter grays and it, it basically helps you build contrast before laying down your colors. So you'll see here that I'm just adding in some carbon black and using a bit of water and my blending brush to blend that black out to a gray. So I wanted to talk a little bit about referencing today. I did get some messages recently over on Instagram. By the way, the handle is at Dagger Designs. That's for both Instagram and Facebook. If you want to check out my online portfolio, feel free to do so. But I got a few questions regarding referencing images and copying and tracing and all these different things. And basically, what do I think of those methods of learning? And you know, what do I think are good techniques to, to reference images? So I think in terms, well, let's start with sort of the most, what people consider the easiest out of the three, which is tracing. So I think tracing is, it's a valid way to learn. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Um, of course, you shouldn't be tracing images, painting them, and then trying to sell them as your own work or something like this, unless of course you've credited the original source. But tracing is a really good way to learn actually. You can sort of, when you're tracing you can sort of see why the person's done their line work in that particular way and if you're trying to learn a very specific style of artwork let's say japanese style illustration or even this american traditional style stuff tracing can get, give you a good feel for what kind of line weights to use how to flick off the end of your lines and taper things down and if you trace it uh, just shows you basically how the person that you're trying to um I suppose imitate their style it, it shows you really how to get a similar look to your line work now as you can see here i'm going over parts of my black and that's mostly you know sometimes you don't get a smooth gradient and you've just got to go back over the top of it okay so jumping on to the second sort of uh i guess method here we're talking about copying other people's artwork or copying designs Again, I think copying is a really good way to learn. It's sort of the next step up from tracing. You know, uh, what, tracing, you're basically just uh, directly transferring someone's image to another sheet of paper. And like I said, this can be a good way to learn in the beginning, but from there, you're gonna wanna move on to copying uh, artwork, copying other people's artwork. And when you're copying, you're basically trying to reproduce another person's artwork or maybe an image if you're doing some realism and you're copying from a photograph. And in this way, copying is a good way to learn as well. You're basically learning how to directly translate what you see through your hands to the page. So you're able to copy an image and make it look exactly how the original looked. And it gives you a really good point of reference because you can look at the original image and say, hey, that's, uh, you know, I did pretty well, but there's a few parts that are, don't look exactly like the original. And whilst that's okay, I mean, you should be aiming to do more original work. Uh, copying in the beginning is a good way to sort of te test yourself. And I think it can be actually quite difficult because you do have a goal in mind 
And the end goal there is for your artwork or your image to look exactly the way that the image looks, uh, the one that you're copying basically. So I think that copying again is a valid method of learning and I think it's a good way to help yourself uh, maybe give yourself a bit of a leg up. However, again, I think that you shouldn't really be trying to pass this work off as your own. Uh, you should always provide uh, the original source material so that people know where you got that particular illustration from. And of course, you shouldn't really be trying to sell that work. There's nothing wrong, I guess, if you were to um, directly uh, attribute that painting or drawing to somebody and you're doing it as, a, um, as your, your attempt on it. Uh, however, like I said, I don't think you should be trying to pass it off as your own work. That, of course, would be, I guess, wrong. Um, and the third and, you know, sort of last thing that I'll talk about here is referencing. And this is one that's most important. People think that referencing, copying and tracing are all the same thing. And that's certainly not the case. Referencing is definitely different to the other two. There's a big, big difference. So referencing is basically taking inspiration and ideas from other images, whether it's illustrations or photographs, but not copying them directly. So this doesn't just mean copying someone's drawing, but changing the colors or copying someone's drawing, but maybe changing the hairstyle because that's sort of just modifying another drawing. Referencing is basically using another artwork or an image to learn maybe a certain technique or maybe learn a certain way that you want something to look and you use that to basically give you a jumping point or a starting point and then you take it in your own direction so the way that for example if i'm referencing a, a food dog body or a tiger body or something like that i might take the uh, the initial drawing or the initial artwork and i might get a marker and basically draw some basic shapes that fit within the structure of that body so i'm not copying the body i'm not actually tracing it to do my complete artwork what i am doing is i'm creating basic shapes that match the curves and the intricacies of that body to give me a good idea of what kind of basic building blocks i should use when drawing that subject matter so then when i start a drawing on a separate piece of paper and maybe I'm drawing, like I said, a tiger body, I can lay down those foundation shapes, compare them to my tracing, and then start building detail on top of this. That way I've got a really solid foundation to work on. And of course, because I'm not copying directly from that image, I'm just using the sort of foundation shapes, I can apply my own style to it, my own techniques to it, and give it a really unique look. But of course the foundation shape is very important and should be sort of the same across the board if you're drawing the same subject matter. Uh, everything's got its own unique shape to it. So in terms of referencing uh, artwork for the sake of learning, I like to sort of trace out basic shapes, whether they're three dimensional, two dimensional, sometimes they, they'll be irregular shapes. So they might just be like blobs, um, but tracing out these shapes to give me an idea of how I want to construct a certain illustration or a certain character and then using that as building blocks for my final sketch. And it's a great way to learn as well. Once you memorize these different shapes, you can start playing with their configuration and just how you want them to look in general. In terms of referencing other things from drawings and photos and still life, a really good way to do it is to just take little elements from them. And I don't mean like someone's drawn a character wearing sunglasses so you take the sunglasses off and put it on your illustration it's it's not really like that i guess i mean you like um you see a dragon painting and the dragon's bright blue with orange belly scales and you know pink spine scales and you really like the way that looks so maybe you're drawing something along those lines maybe a snake or something so you do the orange scales with the pink belly scales and you've just referenced the colors that they've used. They've used really dynamic colors, um, or maybe they've used dynamic colors. Maybe they've used more of a muted color palette and you want your work to look more like that. So you start referencing how other people do their color and what kind of combinations they use within, those, uh, within that range of colors to give them a desired temperature and effect within their artwork. Uh, this can be the same with lime work and it can be the same with the drawing itself, the actual build-up of the illustration. 
All right, so I'm just going to wash out my brush here. We finished our black shading for this one, so we're going to jump into colors in just a moment. Okay, so I'm going to go into the yellow orange here, and we're going to come in and start doing the beak and part of the wing there, and a few parts on our anchor. So yeah, like I said, you can reference colors in that way. Uh, you can reference anything in that way, whether you're referencing the shape of something or the line work style, maybe the style of shading that they have is really unique. Um, and in this way, you're not directly copying. And not only that, but you're slowly building up your, um, you're building up your own way of doing things. You know, you might reference somebody else's colors and then find that you use that color palette or that particular sort of tone of color and I'm just uh, washing my brush out again here. Might go into our brown now, just to do those scale feathers on top of the other wing. So yeah, you might be referencing multiple different sources. And generally I do, if I'm doing an illustration and I'm not sure where to go with it, uh, you know, I might reference two other drawings and two or three photographs of the subject matter. And, you know, so we'll use the tiger example. I might reference two or three photos of a tiger just to try and get the anatomy straight and some of the details on the face. And I might reference a Japanese artist that I really like. I might reference a traditional style artist for a different part of the artwork. And you know, it ends up being really unique and it doesn't look too close to what other people have done because you're not taking all of your reference ideas from the one area, which would be copying. If you're taking all of your reference ideas from one photo, you're basically copying and trying to replicate that. So I'm going in with a bit of pyro red now just to do a few parts of the anchor. And yeah, so that's basically my opinion on um, referencing images, tracing and copying. You know, people think they're all the same thing. And certainly there are elements of the same in there. But I think referencing is more where you gain a point of, uh, a point of reference. <laughs> you gain a point of reference from other people's artwork and from images that you see and they just give you ideas. They basically fuel the engine and you're able to sort of create using those ideas. Copying would be direct, uh, trying to directly translate an image across to another medium or another sheet of paper. Uh, and like I said, tracing is directly uh, placing an image underneath your medium and tracing it straight onto it. So there's not really any work involved there. Like I said, it is a valid method of learning. And I think it's an important step too, if you're just starting out, you should trace, you should trace a lot of other people's work to try and learn the way that they do their line work and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, they are three completely different things and they've got very different uh, uses across the board. So I'm just adding a bit of red to the top of the head here as well. And uh, yeah, so a lot of people think that professional artists and uh, people that have been doing this for a long time don't need to reference things. That's not true at all. Referencing is like the artist's best friend. I don't know any artists that don't reference anything ever. Um, it's true once you get to a certain level of proficiency and skill, once you sort of know how to draw, it, you know, then you don't need to reference as much. I'm just going to do a bit of sap green in the eye here. So I'm just uh, washing my brush out now. And we'll just take a little bit of sap green in the corner. So yeah, you know, it's, it's the artist's best friend. I don't know any artists that don't reference things when they need to. And I think any artist that doesn't reference anything when they're trying to, I guess, draw a specific subject matter, they probably should be referencing things. Anyways, with that having been said, I'm going to finish my rant here because we've finished our painting. I hope you enjoyed this paint along. And I hope you give this one a go. I've had a few people say they really enjoyed these paint along sessions. So you'll have to leave a comment in the comment section down below, letting me know what you'd like to see me paint in the future paint along videos. And let me know what questions you have so that I have topics to talk about with you guys and conversations we can have. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye bye. If you like the content that I make and you'd like to support the channel, make sure you smash that like button. And hey, while you're at it, check out one of these other great videos.